Hi, my name is Teresa Valentino. I am a survivor of child sex trafficking and thus I maintain this nifty DIY mental health pro tips blog at TeresaValentino.com and of course right here on YouTube. And um, so this morning I want to talk about um, being bullied by being bullied in safe spaces about a thing called what I call ISDP. I see the dead people. Um, <clears throat> ISDP for me has been part of my PTSD. It gets bundled in like one of those cable packages, except it's not so premium. I don't know, but I got this one. I've got one, um, I think it's called misophonia, where I hate to hear people eating. The sound of someone eating, like crunching on something, even if they have their mouth closed, can drive me into like a homicidal rage sometimes. Oh, I have face, face blindness. I have um, hypervigilance, accelerated startle response. I've got a ton of them. <clears throat> But right now what I want to talk about is specifically ISDP. So the thing with ISDP is that um, I've had it as long as I can remember. Like my childhood memories are super fragmented because of the amount of violence and um, just stress and whatever that I experienced as a child. I dissociated a lot of things. So while I was dissociated, it was very hard for me to um, remember or and you know meanwhile back at the ranch I was still trying to like grow up and learn to read and all this kind of stuff so my brain is really kind of scrambled on a certain level um, and I did not like many times throughout the ages I've been asked you know do you hear school counselors would ask me you know like do you hear do you see imaginary friends do you have imaginary friends um, and I would always say no to that because what ha was happening with my ISDP, first of all, did not feel imaginary. It felt very real to me, and they, those are not friends. Um, so no, I always answered no. Um, and nobody, you know, the mental health thing back in the 70s really was for shit. It wasn't worth a plug nickel. So, um, at least not whatever I had access to. So, you know, there wasn't a lot of effort to try to communicate with me. Like I had to be able to communicate on a clinical level with clueless adults in order to get any help at all. And so it never happened. Um, but I have had the ISDP for quite a long time. So what I wanna say here today is a little bit challenging because um, I need to explain something. Like with the, the level of mental health difficulty that I have, it's so easy for me to get triggered, so easy for me to get triggered in this world. You have no idea. Um, people just run roughshod over my trauma, you know what I mean? So I really appreciate the intellectual safe spaces that I have, especially the ones that can make me laugh, okay? Stephen Colbert has saved my life on so many occasions by picking my mood right out of the crapper, by making me, finding a way to get me to laugh. And I realize it's a team of people making that happen. Um, but they can put in the hard work and effort and discipline to find a way to make me laugh when I am so fucking depressed about something. And they can even make me laugh kind of on that topic or, you know what I mean? That is worth more than gold to me. Um, and another one that's like that is Seth Meyers. And the thing about those two shows in particular is that they put in so much effort into not being douchebags. You know what I mean? They make it like, they actually care about the same kind of things that I care about. They're like decent human beings. They don't believe in just shitting on people just to do it. So that's why it really kind of bummed me out when both of them have recently kind of fucked with my ISDP situation. So I don't want to seem like I'm putting them on blast at all because the thing is, it's just the Overton window. Like, it's just an indicator of where the Overton window is on mental health awareness in our country. That, um, you know, as a group, like, even among the sort of people, like the resistance, the Antifa, the sort of people that I would like to be around with, um, there's this thing about hearing voices or seeing things that once you hear voices or see things, that you are just dismissed from humanity. Like, you are a complete waste like they are they're embarrassed that they wasted five minutes talking to you as though you were a, a normal or sane or decent person at all because that's the thing like once you've crossed that threshold of seeing or hearing things that other people are not experiencing if you're honest about it at all you're toast i mean it's just you're done they you know some people have that with me because i do astrology like i know that what they think astrology is bears no resemblance or reflection to what i'm doing 
but it's just a concept that they have in their mind that once you're willing to go there, you're just a, a waste of fucking, like, I can't listen to a word you say. Okay, you know what? It's super depressing for me. Who thinks that? Rob Delaney. So many, like, really bright, funny people. Rob Delaney's another one. Such a great safe space for me. Such an honest and bold comedian. I so appreciate all three of those guys and the work that they've done. So I still watch all that stuff because they're still the better, they're still the best ones in society. I mean, they're still the most, you know what I mean? They're still the farthest into the community that I like to be part of. So the thing was like, um, they said this kind of in passing in Seth Meyers that it was like somebody went out on a date with somebody and it's all going great. And then at the very, right when you're getting ready to, you know, close the deal or whatever, they say, oh, Jesus talks to me personally. And they're like, oh, okay. You know, like you dodged a huge bullet by them telling you that right before you started to actually care about them or get engaged with them as a person. That's just so depressing for me because the thing I would like to ask people to think about is this. If you have that immediate cringe reaction to someone telling you that Jesus speaks to them personally, I would suggest that you kind of apply some of the resilience things that I'm learning and, and learning to be visible in the world um, and just like wait and actually check what's happening with the other person before you decide how to respond or react. That's a very tricky thing to learn how to do. I'm learning how to do it myself. Um, and I realize that people like Seth Meyers or Stephen Colbert or whoever, they don't have to bother with this. I mean, they're good people. I think that they would care about it. I think that they do. But just generally, you know, the amount of voice that I have and the number of people that really are trying to shout about this is very small. So basically, if you do feel like that, that once someone has said that they see dead people or they hear voices or Jesus speaks to them or something, Rather than just thinking that, oh, that person is insane in an irredeemable way and, you know, I can't waste one second being seen talking to them, I would ask that you instead ask, you know, wait and see what this is about. Because what if they say that Jesus told them personally that love is the only thing that matters, that kindness is the only thing that I ever have to worry about, just being as kind as I can to everybody that I meet and loving them no matter what. Then would you still just have to walk away from that person like they were a piece of shit? Um, you know, and obviously if they say Jesus told me to run for Senate as a Republican, oh God, well, yeah, what else is new? That's a maniac. That's someone to walk away from. But, you know, it just makes people have to be in the closet about the world that we live in. And honestly, you know, there's so much going on that people are oblivious to, like normal, sane, healthy people you know, live with blinders on, man. They see like this much of the world. And if you see anything outside in the margins, then you are uh, completely dismissed from the human family. So that's kind of a bummer. And then the, the thing with the, um, the Colbert show recently did was um, he was doing a Tuck Buckford thing, which is one of the funniest things that he does. I just love that. That one and Esteban Colberto are two things that if I ever become an old lady dying in a nursing home, I will lay in my bed thinking about that and laugh my ass off. Um, but uh, then he started talking about, well, my dissociative identity disorder. You know, and I understand that, like thinking that Alex Jones is probably diagnosable. But here's the thing. I'm actually clinically diagnosed with a dissociative disorder, which is not dissociative identity disorder. Um, dissociative disorder just means I have a very difficult time being present in my experience because of the amount of trauma that I have experienced before. Dissociative identity disorder, where you have multiple personalities in the same body, is a really extreme condition Unlike the really common dissociative disorder that I live with, um, that is controversial. Like the the doctor from Sybil from that famous movie with Sally Field was really shady, beyond unethical. Like I don't know what was wrong with that female, but that's the once again the 50s, 60s, 70s. Man, people were just off the edge of not having their mental health shit together. So, um. The other thing about that is that I guarantee you, Alex Jones is almost definitely diagnosable on a cluster B basis, okay? He almost certainly, sociopath, psychopath, borderline, 
narcissist, something in this neighborhood, a range, that's going to apply to Alex Jones if he ever took any kind of such applicable screening, which he never would. See, that's the thing. That's like a person like me has to walk around in shame of the fucking dissociative disorder that I have part of PTSD because people did so much violence against me. So I have to keep that fucking secret, but then they're making jokes about it as if... <sighs> it's just frustrating and I don't want them to apologize or anything because it's really, it's not them. It's the way the whole fucking world thinks about stuff. So it's just frustrating, but I'm turning the tide with that as I can. That's why my blog exists. That's why I'm here. So I'm gonna make a separate little video about um who is america because here's the thing i love both of these two shows seth meyers i will have no compunction to watch that show i will watch it every time same with stephen colbert every time because you know what everybody slips up time and again and they just don't know because nobody knows like i said it's an overton window problem so um i mean this is my little push so but the other thing is like i see people wanting to talk about um Borat and who is America and they're talking about Kurt Metzger and whatever and like they're, they're saying well Borat is just full of rape jokes but you know here's the thing I would like people to start thinking about a concept called legal standing I might need to make a whole separate video on that but you know what for me as a survivor as a me too girl I love the shit out of Borat I laughed so hard at that movie I wish I owned it on DVD I wish I could watch it every single day because that shit is amazing so, I mean, I was cool with the way he messed with the feminists. I appreciated the prostitute that he brought to dinner. I liked the whole thing, okay? Um, I don't know. So I, I just kind of feel like a lot of the time it's an outrage machine that this one wants to spew outrage at that one. Like, you know, Sean Hannity doesn't speak for me. He should shut the fuck up. I hate the man show. I hate it that Jimmy Kimmel gets a mulligan on that. I really do. It's gross. It disgusts me every day. You know what? I have no problem with fucking Borat or Who Is America. Um, I I don't want to hear any joke from Jimmy Kimmel, especially not about Roy Moore, especially not about Time's Up. Time's Up for you, fucking Jimmy Kimmel. So, um, legal standing, man. It's about letting the people who've been harmed the most speak first, okay? Because the amount of time and energy that I would need to devote to the, to the cleanup on aisle six behind all these agendized motherfuckers who just want to shut this one down or shut that one up or embarrass this one over here or call attention to themselves in some other way. It, this, is, this makes the world not survivable. So um, just wanted to put that out there just for people to kind of think about that, like mental health awareness, Hopefully we'll start it. We'll turn a new corner on this and we'll push our Overton window. I think this Trump thing, we're going to have to look at it as really sending the world in a better direction. Like, it, you know, it's always darkest before the dawn. Um, this is, things are changing, I think. We'll see. We're going to see how it goes. Anyway, thank you for listening to me rant. Hey, see, you're undoing the damage of society right there just by listening to me. Please remember to comment, rate, subscribe. All that, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. TeresaValentino.com